From the 11th century House of the White Swan in Canterbury, travellers take to the road again by stagecoach. When you finish lunch, you just step straight into a scene Great Grandfather knew. Graceful, high-bred horses, coachman and guard in traditional dress, and the shining coach itself, the Canterbury Bell, still gallant and gay after a hundred years of service. With clatter of hoof and jangle of harness, the Canterbury Bell is away. Under the towering beauty of the cathedral, past mullioned window and timbered gable. Even today, the four in hand seems almost a natural sight in such a setting. With its escort of riders from the White Swan stables, the coach rattles through some of the loveliest countryside in England. The Canterbury Bell and its companion, the Tantivy, make four journeys a week from Canterbury to the Kentish coast and back. Fifteen passengers is the full complement. No queuing, no standing. Plenty of good fresh canned air and the chance of a chat with coachman or guard thrown in. Mr. Yorkie Wilson has the ribbons of the bell, and he, bless you, has been driving coaches more years than he cares to remember, in fair weather and foul. it's still a good life on the road. The horses appreciate it. If you ask them, there never was any real need for all this rushing about in these infernal trains and motor cars anyway. And if you've never thrilled to the sound of the guard's shrill horn beside you, well, try riding on a stagecoach sometime. 